will be okay. It's one o'clock. Good afternoon and good morning, people from uh, uh, West Coast and from Hawaii. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us, dear brothers and sisters and dear ambassadors for peace. I am Tomiko Dagan, <clears throat> uh, Senior Vice President of the UPF USA. Uh, I truly thank you for joining us. This is the, in the 11th week of the interfaith prayer uh, for the uh, prayer for the nation and the world. This program has been sponsored by IAPD, which is Interfaith Pre uh, Association for Peace, Peace and Development. And this pro uh, IAPD is a project of the Universal Peace Federation, which is an NGO, non-governmental organization in general consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. Dear brothers and sisters, America is truly in trouble, in crisis. This situation is urgent. This situation truly reminds me again in the passage of the Bible from the Exodus, the Lord, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me and I have seen the oppression with which Egyptians oppressed them. And the Lord guided Israelites with a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire to the promised land. God who guided them, Israelites, thousands of years ago is very much alive with us. As a people of faith, let us rekindle our faith in God and reunite ourselves in love. Yes. As a one human race, as we are one family under God. Together, let us build a nation where God has been guiding. So I'd like to invite our moderator, Archbishop Starings, the founder of the Imani Temple, uh, African American Congregation, uh, and also national chairman of the IAPD. Let's, uh, let us, well, let's welcome Archbishop uh, George Stannings, Jr. Thank you very much to our senior vice president of the Universal Peace Federation, our beloved sister, Mrs. Tomiko Duggan, for being the best MC that anyone could ever ask for in conducting our UPF interfaith service, our weekly service. Uh, each one of our special religious leaders will lead us in a reading of their sacred scriptures, their sacred texts, as well as providing a prayer and a commentary. They, they have from four to five minutes at the max. And they will, trust me, utilize the best of that time and bring us all closer, spiritually connecting us, even though we are spatially, socially, physically distanced, their prayers, their scriptures, their message will connect us spiritually. We have religious leaders from the three great world religions, from Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And so our first presenter will be our beloved brother from the Jewish faith, Rabbi Moshe Michael Abraham, who is a peace-loving global citizen. He has been everywhere, literally all over the world. He's currently in Queens now, but he has lived in Argentina, Brazil, uh, and I says, and New York, uh, but born in Bolivia, South America. Uh, he is a noted scholar and teacher, and he specializes in the study of Ashlak's commentary on the Zohar. His other primary work, Talmud Esser Sheferat, is regarded as a central textbook for the students of Kabbalah, or Kabbalah, so you pronounce both ways, uh, both ways. <laughs> he, uh, he, he currently uh, serves as a rabbi at Beit Den in Queens, New York, under the guidance of head rabbi Eliyahu Ben Haim and Rabbi Benjamin Golan, where he trains returning Jews and converts to get closer to G. 
You know how the Jews are when it comes to the name, that name. So <laughs> to the closer to G. Uh, yeah. And as I said, he is a universal citizen. I don't know where his citizenship is because he's a global, but I am so excited that he works for uh, Yahweh, that he is a man, a scholar, and a teacher. Let us receive Rabbi Moshe Michael Abraham. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend Jenkins. Uh, I'm very happy to be part of this uh, great 20 minutes that we have been able to give this message to the world as to how can we get closer to God, if you want to say with the right word, um, with respect. Lately, we've been uh, in darkness, if you want to call it. We've been used to uh, being together without a problem. And now uh, God's put us in a position where we have to retrospect, be in the home, get, get closer to God, get, get closer to the scripture, uh, be always available for him. So we've been asked, I have a small prayer that we do. It's really the Aleinu prayer. Aleinu is, is, is the last blessings that we do when we usually complete our, 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 our prayers that we do three times a day. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote verbatim and then we'll discuss about it. It's just like this. It is our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the molder of principal creation, for he has not made us like the nations of the land and he has not made us like the families of the earth. For he has not assigned a portion like theirs, nor like, like all their multitudes, but we bend our knees bow and acknowledge our thanks before the king who reigns over kings the holy one blessed is he he <laughs> heaven and the system above and his powerful presence is in the loftiest heights he is our god and there is no other true is our god there is nothing besides him it is written in your holy torah you are to know this day and take to your heart that Hashem is the only God in heaven above and on the earth below, and there is no other. Therefore, we put our hope in you, Hashem our God, that we may soon see your mighty splendor to remove detestable idolatry from the earth, and false gods will be utter cut off to perfect the universe through the almighty sovereignty. Then all humanity will come upon your name. We turn all the earth's wickets towards you and the world inhabitants will recognize and know that you, every knee shall bend, every tongue shall swear before Hashem our God. They will bend every knee and cast themselves down and to the glory of your name, they will render homage and they will all accept upon themselves the yoke of your kingship that you may reign over them soon eternally for the kingdom is yours and you will reign for all eternity in glory as it is written in your holy Torah Hashem shall reign for all eternity. And it is says Hashem will be king over all the world. On that day, Hashem will be the one and his name will be one. What does this mean? Idolatry is talking about how we were before after money. How were we before about uh, the television? How were we before about our, our, our work with, with, with no reason? Removing idolatry is, is, is having the, the, the desire to have nothing. So what, what God has given us right now, he's given us an opportunity to introspect, to say, how are we going to go back to normality right now? When we go back to normality, are we going to appreciate God's work? Are we going to, are we going to get closer to the scripture? Are we, going to, are we going to get closer to knowing how to love your neighbor as thyself? Are you going to get closer so you can spread wisdom? Are you going to get closer so you can spread love to your, to your neighbor? Are you going to be a part of helping your government uh, people, your, your leaders to get closer to God? Because God is telling us right now, I'm just giving you an example right now. I'm giving you the first, the first plague, which is this corona. And, and I'm going to test you right now. What are you going to do with it? When you, when you were walking in, in the streets, you thought everything was okay, that you were the master, you were the, the, you, you had sovereignty over, sovereignty over everything. Hashem is saying, God is saying, no, you have to know me right now. Some people will say, okay, maybe not. Now what's happening? He, he gave us the second plague. The second plague right now is all these riots that are taking place. 
this, 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 there's this destruction going on. So we, 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 we want to be able to, to pray to God and say, God, please allow us to, to, to get closer to you. Give us wisdom. We don't want any third or fourth plagues anymore. We want to we wanna go back to normality with a new heart, with a new consciousness, to be with you, to love you, so we can use all of the infrastructure that you've built so we can open up our houses of worship so we're able to transmit the word of God and say, God, please give us an opportunity, a new, a new life. Let us get into this, out of this third world war that has taken place with a new heart and with an open mind. And, 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 and what the word in Hebrew that we use is for repentance is teshuvah. God, please forgive me for all the sins that I made. I, I want to be a better man. Please show me how I can manifest your will. Please, 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 God, give me another chance to make this world better for, for my children, for the generations that are coming. So when we are heard in the future, in the, in the history books in the future, that we did listen to you. Amen. 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 Rabbi Moshe Michael Abraham, truly words from the depths of the Torah. Thank you. Coming, Thank you. To, coming to understand the awesomeness uh, of who we are in this creation and, and what is required of us. We thank you for your commitment of service to people and to humanity. Thanks again. Thank you, Reverend. Our next spiritual leader comes to us from the Christian tradition. She is an awesome woman of God. In fact, she lives in the same city, works in the same city where I reside in uh, Washington, D.C. She is a noted scholar in her own right. While she may be an associate pastor, an ordained minister, she is also a lawyer, matriculated at the Georgetown Law School in Washington, D.C. And she serves as the, uh, in an outstanding position with a dear friend of mine, um, Bishop Glenn Staples at the Temple of Praise Church in Washington, D.C. She is also a host of her, of her own television program from behind, entitled From Behind the Podium, Conversations About Law and Faith. This dynamic lecturer, facilitator, teacher, and scholar is our next presenter Please receive the Reverend Dr. Sharon Stiles Anderson. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. And thank you, Bishop Stallings, for that awesome introduction. I appreciate it. I don't know if you remember, but before I even thought about preaching or teaching, I was the MC at one of Bishop Staples' anniversary, and you were preaching that day. <laughs> <laughs> you spoke into my life and said, you're not just going to be a lawyer, you're going to be a preacher. I don't know. Oh my. Years ago. <laughs> and I wasn't even thinking about going into the ministry. So wow. um, I certainly thank God for you. Certainly give honor to my bishop in his absence. Um, I give honor to Sister Tamiko. We always thank God for you and your spirit and your love. Dr. Jenkins, we love you and thank God for your leadership. Sister Eureka, thank you always for you being an encouraging um, light um, in the world. And we just thank God for this organization and for all of the love and the support and what you do for the kingdom, the kingdom. Um, God is a God of confirmation. And I say that because um, uh, Rabbi Yoshi or Moshi, it, it, it is very... Um, similar to what God has been giving me and dealing with me as it relates to what's going on. And I, before I pray, I'd like to just offer a couple of scriptures. Um, what God has given me, gave me a word that I've been preaching um, actually across the, the, the world in the past couple of months. And I know that it was from God because I've been having opportunity to speak on it. Um, and, and the word is the beauty of the quarantine. He gave me the word, the beauty of the quarantine. And he led me to 2 Corinthians 5 and 16, which reads, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do no so longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. 
the old has gone, the new is here. And he also led me to Isaiah 43 and 18. Um, and I'll be reading from the Passion Translation because it offers wisdom as we're transforming in his glory. And the Bible reads, stop dwelling on the past. Don't even remember these former things. I am doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and open up flowing streams in the desert. And the last scripture I'll give to you is 1 Corinthians 6, 16 and 9. And I'll just read the A clause, which says, a great and effectual door has opened. And so what God has been speaking to me about um, very similarly is we are in a season where as a result of the pandemic, we've had to quarantine. And what quarantine means, the definition of quarantine is being in seclusion so that you will be in a safe place. Um, and he told me that we are in a situation like a cocoon, um, like a, a butterfly, like a transformation. During the quarantine, during the pandemic time, he put us in a situation where we couldn't go out, we couldn't do what we would normally do. And as Rabbi said, what we did and should have been doing and should be doing in this quarantine time is getting closer to God, amen, is to begin to read and to pray and to learn. What is it, God, that you would have me to do when I emerge? And just like the butterfly, God is requiring change. He's requiring transformation. And what's happening is transformation is taking place in the body of Christ. Transformation is taking, is taking place in the world. And there's so much change happening everywhere. It's actually happening faster than we can keep up with it. Amen. And so we know that the pandemic and the health issues have caused us to look at things very differently looking at things, how we relate with our families, looking at how we do business. And now it, we, he's requiring us as a result of what we've seen with the, the police shootings and the police killings and the race relations um, to, take, um, to transform how we relate to each other. And so the opportunity is happening. And God just recently said um, in 1 Corinthians 16 and 9, he took me back to that scripture. There's a great and effectual door is open. So the, the, the Lord told me every time I had opportunity to ask two questions. The first question was, what is your new? Because there is no normal. We are not going back to normal. And we don't want to go back to normal. We want to go to new new opportunities, new mantles are falling. We've had um, pastors in the Christian church passing away, whether it was a result of the, the, the pandemic or otherwise. Generals in the faith have been have been passing. My mother, who was a great woman of God, passed right before the quarantine. And so God said, this is a time of reset where we are being required to transform. Just like the caterpillar is required to transform, um, we are being required to transform. And because God says all things work together for the good of those who love him and who are called, the, the, the question is, are you going to transform for the good and transform and emerge like a butterfly and fly? Or are you going to transform um, and or be damaged in this cocoon situation and then not be able to fly just like a caterpillar who, if you're damaged when you're in the cocoon, you might emerge with a broken wing or you might be emerged with a broken antenna. And then you will not be able to do what God has called you to do. So what are you going to do? What is your new? What is your new norm? And what effectual door are you going to walk through? And God is calling leaders of faith to take their place, to take their place. The, Bi the Bible says that we are one body, one body with many members. Amen. And Amen. so because we are one body with many members, we have a call and a charge to do what God has called us to do. And that is to unite this nation, no matter your color, no matter your religion, no matter what you look like, to become everything that we have been called by God to be so that we can do what God has called us to do. And what did he call us to do? He said, we are to take care of the orphans. We are to take care of the widows. We are to take care of the homeless. We are to take care of the needy. We are to take care of those that are hurting. Amen. Amen. Amen.
as a body of believers, we, for some reason, just as the as the rabbi said, um, prior to this season, have been very or less introspective than we need to be. We have been looking at things as to and, and, and focusing on the lust of the flesh and yeah. what we need as individuals and not do what God has called us to do. And because I'm Christian, I'll talk about Jesus, what Jesus has called us to do, which is to help other people. And so we have to, as the church, the Christian church, the leaders of faith in this world, emerge from this beautiful quarantine, which is the time that we've had to reflect and love on God and spend time with God and get wisdom and direction. And we have to emerge and hit head on this issue that has caused the United States of America and albeit the world to be fragmented. And it is not what God wants and, and God was not pleased. So he gave us time, amen, the beauty yeah. of this quarantine to be able to emerge with wisdom and with plans and knowledge, not from us, but from him. Hallelujah. So that we can run, unite and, and be the leaders run, uniting the people of God for, to do God's work here on this earth. Amen. And I believe it's going to happen. I believe that this reset is going to be divine. I believe that we as the believers are going to, are going to emerge from this divine cocoon and usher in a new time and era that we have never seen before. And God is going to be pleased with our walk. God is going to be pleased with our talk. And God is going to be pleased with what we emerge and, and how, from and how we emerge. But that's only if we take advantage of these moments during this divine cocoon, this beautiful quarantine season, and get the direction that we have from him. And so I thank God for um, UPF and, 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 and Dr. Jenkins and Bishop Stallings and Sister Tomiko, because convening these calls and convening um, these conferences and, and daily prayers has just enabled us um, to stay in touch with what God wants us to do. God, what does God want us to do as a body? But what God wants us to do is individual men and women of God so that we can um, take charge and 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 unite because that is what we are called to do. So wow! Bow your head wow! To wow! Was in a short word of prayer of unification, um, but remember when we're talking to people, it's about unification and it's about taking advantage of this beautiful quarantine time so that we can emerge just like the butterfly and fly beautifully over everything that has been set by the enemy to destroy us, and we will do that with God's help. So let us pray. Father God, it's in the precious name of your son, Jesus. God, that a few of your humble servants come first to say thank you. We thank you, Master, for your mercy, and we thank you, God, for your grace. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Master, for your loving kindness. We thank you, God, for your peace. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your healing power. Now, Master, we come, Lord God, because you said in your word that whatsoever we ask in your name, it shall be given unto us. Whatsoever we ask in your name, it shall be given and you shall do it. But if we touch and agree on anything, God, that it shall be done. And that when two or three are gathered together there, you would be in our midst. So we come, Lord God, praying for our nation, praying for our world, praying, God, that you, Lord God, begin to move from heart to heart and breast to breast, Lord God. Oh, God, that you, Lord God, begin to give all of the leaders in this world the wisdom, Lord God, that they need, Lord God, to unify, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Because you told us, Lord God, that we are one body with many members, Lord God, and that the eye needs the hand and the hand needs the foot and the ear needs the nose, Lord God, that regardless of the differences, Lord God, regardless of the different colors, regardless of the different denominations, regardless of the different faiths, regardless, Lord God, of, of the different cultures, Lord God, that we, just like your body, just like you said in your word, Lord God, can come together and be effective, Lord God, to do, Lord God, what you have called us to do on this earth, Lord God. Oh God, we want to be effective, Lord God. We want to change, Lord God. We want to be everything that you've called 
us to be, Lord God. We want you to be pleased, Lord God. We don't want our praise, Lord God, and our walk, Lord God, and our work, Lord God, to be a stench in your nose, Lord God. But we want our aroma, Lord God, to be a sweet-smelling savor, Lord God. So in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that as we go throughout this day, Lord God, we pray, Master, that you would give those on this line, Lord God, the continued wisdom, Lord God, the continued purity of heart, Lord God, the continued, Lord God, knowledge, Lord God, to do what you have called us to do, Lord God. Oh God, so that we, Lord God, might be change agents in the earth, Lord God, change agents for peace, Lord God, change agents for love, Lord God, change agents for life, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, plant us, Lord God, where we need to be planted, Lord God, to do your work, to do your will, Lord God. Oh God, let the anointing, Lord God, of the Holy Ghost, Lord God, rest on our vocal cords, Lord God, so that when we speak, Lord God, that people will hear us, Lord God, and they will hear, Lord God, and be taken, Lord God, by the favor of the Lord, Lord God, to bring people together, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We rebuke right now division, Lord God. We rebuke right now cultural differences, Lord God. We rebuke right now in the name of Jesus violence, Lord God. We rebuke anything that is not of you, Lord God, because we know, God, that you are love. We know, God, that you are peace. We know, God, that you are joy. So in the name of Jesus, God, whatever you have to do, Lord God, to bring this world together, Lord God, we put it in your hands, Lord God, because we know, God, that you are able. We know that you're able to do anything but fail. We know that with you, God, all things are possible, God. So we're trusting and leaning and depending upon you, God. We're trusting and leaning and depending upon your word, Lord God. And before we close, Lord God, we just want to say hallelujah. We just want to give you the highest praise. We just want to thank you for everything that you've already done, Lord God. We know, God, that you've already fixed it. We know, Lord God, that you've already made a way of escape, Lord God. So in the name of Jesus, just help us, Lord God. Help us to know where to go and what to do what to say and how to say it, Lord God, and help us, Lord God, to be better in you. And we ask, Lord God, that you forgive us of any sins, Lord God, anything that we've done, thought, or, or, or heard, or, or just, just did not do, Lord God, that you've called us to do, Lord God, because we know that in repentance, Lord God, it opens us room, Lord God, for your spirit to come in, Lord God, and guide us even more. For anybody else, Lord God, that does not know you, Lord God, we pray for them right now. We pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones. We pray for the police officers that have been affected. We pray for the families of the police officers that have been affected. We pray for everyone that has been affected by COVID and has lost family members and that may be suffering. We pray for a healing, hallelujah, for this world today. And we know that you are able to do it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And our soul says amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. The Reverend Dr. Sharon Stiles Anderson, I thank God for the anointing upon your life and that the fruit is evidenced in, by those seeds that were planted many years ago. Thank you so much. Our best to your beloved pastor, our brother and friend, Bishop Glenn Staples at Temple of Praise. Thank you. Our final spiritual leader to share with us today is of the Islamic faith, Dr. Daoud Nasimi, you know the, the word the word Daoud is David in English, yes. and uh, he is like King David. He's an awesome man. He's an awesome awesome servant of uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, and uh, he loves Allah. Allah with all of his heart. He comes from a very interesting background. He started out studying electrical engineering in Chicago. In fact, he got not only a BA, but a, a BS, but a, a, a master's uh, in electrical engineering uh, and worked for years in the field of telecommunications. Uh, but then somehow Muhammad, peace be upon him, must have pulled his coattail and said, we have another mission for you. We want you to move from electrical engineering to spiritually, in, to spiritual engineering, to <laughs> plug people back into their true source. So he decided to move uh, his career from electrical engineering to religious studies. Uh, he's gone and doing uh, studying Arabic and uh, Arabic language. He has gone from South, uh, gone from uh, Saudi Arabia all the way to England. And so you know he's very erudite. 
and yet he's so down to earth. Let us receive our Islamic brother, Imam Dr. Daoud Nassimi. Thank you so much, uh, Bishop Stallings and Sister Tomiko and uh, Dr. Jenkins and the rest of our beloved guests and friends. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, which means peace be upon you. It is a pleasure and it's an honor to be in this noble forum and to offer uh, a few words and a prayer. The Quran, the final book of God to, uh, that Muslims believe, continuously informs us that this life is full of trials and tribulations. And this life is temporary and the results of all these tests will be given to us in the next life where absolute justice will be established for everyone and all victims will be compensated for any losses and any issues in this life. Regarding COVID-19 pandemic, we need to remind ourselves that while this disease has been a disaster for the world, it is also a testing opportunity for all of us to learn many lessons from it and reflect on the meaning of our temporary lives on this planet. While the humanity is badly waiting for a vaccine or treatment for this disease, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God, the final messenger of God for Muslims. Uh, he told us, 14, over 1400 years ago, that for every disease, there is a medicine. Meaning that God, when he creates any disease, he also creates the medicine for it. But God allows for the disease to stay for a while so that people are tested. And then Allah, God enables the human beings to discover the medicine so there will be a vaccine and medicine sooner or later. But the real important point that we need to focus on is our reactions and our behavior towards our creator God and towards the circumstances during these testing times. And this is what we are tested for. We need to keep reflecting continuously on the powers of God and on our own weaknesses and vulnerabilities. And we need to pay better attention to our Creator and to his teachings. While Islam requires all of us to take every measure and medical advice to avoid such diseases at our human level, but we need to pay attention, serious attention, to the key salvation formula of this crisis. This crisis will eventually have two categories of people from God's point of view, the winners of this test and the losers of this test. The winners of this test are those people who turn to God more sincerely and more seriously in this time and would remain steadfast after the crisis is over. The losers, on the other hand, are those who ignore or reject the message of this crisis from God's point of view and they only worry about the apparent causes of these sufferings. So the winners are not those people who don't get the virus or who don't die because death and life is in the hand of God, not in our hands. And the losers are not those who get the virus or who die or face other problems. So we need to focus how we can be the winners of this testing time. With this humble reminder and message about this crisis, we need to make, a, let's make a prayer. In the name of God, the merciful, the gracious. O oh God, Ya Allah, we praise you and thank you as you are worthy of all praises and thanks. Creator of the entire universe. Indeed, you are our God. You are our creator. You are our true Lord and caretaker. 
you have always been with us and you are fully aware of our inner convictions and our various issues. You are the only one we can fully depend on. You are the only one worthy of worship and you are the only one worthy of unconditional obedience. Our nurturing master, we as humanity acknowledge that we have forgotten you. We have neglected you. We have been ungrateful to you. We have become too busy with our worldly affairs and the materialistic gains. We have distracted ourselves by consuming too much of entertainment. We have been searching for peace through the worldly attractions which have never given us the peace we seek. We acknowledge that we have become selfish and arrogant. We have been unjust to each other and we have committed all kinds of injustices to others. We acknowledge that we have not paid attention to the real purpose of life. We have neglected the consequences of our actions to our coming eternal life. And we have ignored our accountability in front of you in the coming day of judgment. Our source of refuge. We take refuge with you and turn to you. We have realized our weaknesses and our vulnerability, especially with your test of COVID-19. Yes. We have learned our lessons. We, have, we are humbling ourselves to you, O oh God. We beseech your help. We seek your forgiveness. We beg your pardon. We want to change ourselves and our conditions. We want to better follow your path and the path of all of your prophets and messengers who invited their followers to worship you alone. Our source of healing, we implore you for a cure for COVID-19 pandemic because your cure is the only true and full cure. We seek your healing as so much of our human race is currently suffering from this disease, and so many of our medical professionals are struggling in its front lines, guide the minds of our medical scientists and professionals to come up with the treatment soon, and until then, help us to succeed in this trial. Our just God, Help us to stand for justice and stand against any form of injustices that are happening in America and around the world. Help us to stop racial injustices and systematic racism. Help us to relieve the sufferings of the victims and of these injustices. Help us to stand against any economic injustices and poverty and help us to fulfill the rights of the poor and the needy our source of peace. Help us to stand for peace and work for peace. Help us to bring peace to our own hearts and to the hearts of others. We implore peace from you as you are the only source of peace. Help us realize that the real peace comes only as a result of full submission to you and remembering you, our guide. We seek your pure guidance as you are the only true guide. As you are the only true guide, we seek yes. you, we seek yes. you a straight path, the path of those whom you have blessed and not the path of those who continue to ignore you and the misguided. May we honor one another. May we yes. thank and glorify you together. And may we make our world better. Amen. Amin. Amin. Shukran. Mm -hmm. Shukran, Habibi. Awesome. Oh, did we feel your heart? Each one of you. My beloved brother, Rabbi Abraham Toda, did we feel your heart? Did you bring to us the heart of the one who is our creator? Thank you, Dr. Stiles mm -hmm. Anderson. What a passionate, prophetic woman of God. How meaningful. And then the icing on the cake there. There he goes. Dr. Daoud Nassini. Nassimi. Nassimi. Dr. Daoud Nassimi. We are grateful. And I know that our UPF chairman, Dr. Michael Jenkins, will be the dessert for the rest, 
for the conclusion of this broadcast. Let us, for the rest of this prayer, interfaith prayer service, let us bring on the Reverend Dr. Michael William Jenkins. Thank you, Archbishop Stallings, for your great leadership and your love for all the people of the book and for all humanity. I believe that's a key reason that these interfaith prayers are lifting up so much uh, faith and love to God. And I want to thank uh, also Rabbi Abraham. Uh, I am very deeply moved by your consistent love for other people of God and your embrace and leadership in New York. We can never forget your participation at the Interreligious Association for Peace and Development in New York in November of 2018. You made a, a very special address there and helped all faiths come together. Dr. Anderson, we know your great work as associate pastor with uh, Bishop Staples and also your great work to bring your daughter forward as a youth leader. And we feel your insight and wisdom is guiding us to really understand that we can't look back anymore. It's time to look forward. God is doing a new thing. And our beloved Dr. Dawood Nassimi, who I've known and I appreciate so much, you could feel Dr. Nassimi's prayer was a crying out to Allah, crying out on behalf of all of us uh, for understanding and, and God's grace. And the greatest of all this is the fact that love, love from God is the greatest healing power together with his word. So I also want to thank Miss Jan Duplain for joining us. She's a prominent interfaith leader in America. We're very honored. There are many faith leaders on and uh, we're grateful. We have also uh, about 500 people watching on Facebook. And we, pr we know that the collective prayers of the righteous availeth much. And when we come together like this, it's not just an activity of internal heart and thought towards God, but prayer causes things to happen. Prayer touches the mind and the spirit of the people. And I feel your prayers today brought another great advancement in the healing of all those suffering from COVID-19 and all those who have lost loved ones. We must heal and go forward. And at the same time, the sadness over the tragedy of Rayshard Brooks and also George Floyd, how can this happen? We must end this now, but it can only be end with love and all of our family coming together. That will take a lot of prayer. I wanna thank our founder, Dr. Hak Chahan Moon, the mother of peace. She's the founder of UPF. And she is the one that announced at the UN, together with her husband, the Reverend Dr. Sam Young Moon, that the only way for the world's families to go forward is that the religious leaders must shine a light on the path of love and the path of truth. Only the religious leaders have the covenant with God that allows them to share their wisdom and open up the doors of understanding beyond national boundaries, be presidents and kings. The religious leaders have their loyalty to Allah, to Jehovah or, or God. They have their loyalty beyond politics. It's a beautiful thing. And that's why I wanna thank Dr. Moon for this great occasion. And we are looking forward to praying together more. We would like to request that each one of the religious leaders find at least one more great religious leader of great note in your communities and have them on one of the prayers in the future weeks. We need your help. We want to expand to those who are really called by God to bring this nation and the world together in love. So we respect all the political leaders. When Mother Moon made that proclamation at the UN, she said cooperation has to be secured between the, the kings and the prophets. To lead the king, the prophet, the prophetic voice must lead the king. It was Samuel that anointed Saul. And if Saul would have listened to Samuel, he could have been blessed. So that's why the religious leaders were calling on you now, not only to pray, but to lead. We need the voice of God leading all the races that are pouring onto the streets to end our divisions. They need leadership. They need your love and leadership and wisdom from the great eternal scriptures of God. I want to thank you. And now we'll turn it back over to our senior vice president, Tomiko Duggan, for our instructions about our next prayer meeting. Thank you. And we'll have just a moment of silent prayer. Let us pray.
Thank you. Shalom. Peace. Assalamu alaikum. Toda. Mrs. Tomiko Duggan. Thank you so much, Dr. <clears throat> Jenkins. And uh, I've been really touched by your, uh, the presenters of prayers and uh, words. I believe you are the one, you are the pillars of clouds. You are the pillars of fires. God is sending, sending us in this time to guide us to the promised land. Let us go together. So next Thursday, we have a rabbi from actually Israel is joining us. And we have another minister is coming from Virginia WAWV. Uh, he is a radio talk show, but he's also a pastor is joining us. Wonderful. So let's meet next Thursday at 1 p.m. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good afternoon and good day. Thank you. Bye.